Welcome to the Experience Jesus Calling podcast. Today, we speak with Kaz McCaslin, the founder of Upward Sports. Kaz had a vision to create the best sports experience possible for every child while providing an environment to nurture kids' faith. Upward Sports has grown under McCaslin's leadership and guidance from a few hundred children playing in seven church basketball leagues to more than half a million children playing in 2,500 multi-sport clinics, camps, academies, and leagues in 47 states and 72 countries. My name is Kaz McCaslin. I'm the president and founder of Upward Sports. I was um, very privileged to be a part of a, a military family. My dad was in the Army for 30 years and As a result, we traveled quite a bit, everything from uh, Germany to Japan to um, back to Pennsylvania and New Orleans and Washington State. And then when he retired, we ended up down in the uh, down in Georgia. Traveling around just really um, it causes you to uh, find a way to make friends fast, you know. And uh, and for me, the way we did that was through sports. You know, my older siblings uh, and my dad, they all love sports. And uh, it was a great unifier. It didn't matter how tall you were, how short you were, what color you were, where you went to church, or if you went to church. Uh, when you played sports, everybody was on a team, and, and everybody buddied up really quick. I think it had a big part of making you know making all of us who we are today. When I got out of high school, um, I actually had a, a pretty rough injury in high school. Um, I was all about sports, and I wanted to play in the NBA one day, like every young kid that, that comes along that wants to play sports. But for me, um, I, I, it was a big-time desire for me and when I when I got this injury um, it was really difficult because I realized it wasn't going to be sports for me and when I got out of high school um, I just went to work for Home Depot the very first Home Depot there ever was as a matter of fact and uh, my my brother was in the management program there and he got me a job there and it was really exciting to be a part of something that new that was growing that fast but then um, then there was a, a guy in my church my youth minister that came to me and said uh, you know, you really should consider being a minister of recreation. And I said, really? I said, what's a minister of recreation? <laughs> and he began to explain it to me and asked me if I wanted to go to look at a church that um, had a gym and recreation facility. And I said, sure. And so we went at lunch one day. And and when I saw this place, uh, a church with a gym, I, I just didn't know whether to be extremely happy or extremely mad. Uh, happy because I wanted to be a part of it or mad because I didn't grow up with one in my church, you know. So <laughs> um, I said, I said, I'm telling you, this is what I want to do. And I said, what do I got to do? And he said, well, you got to go to college. Well, I'd, I'd been out of college for two years, and that was uh, – uh, that seemed like an impossibility to me. There was no way in the world that that was going to work for me. And um, and so as a result, um, uh, I just told him, I don't think I could do it. He said, the, the Lord will open the doors. And um, I started pursuing it. And before long, I went to uh, Truett McConnell um, in Cleveland, Georgia. And I graduated from there and then went on to Georgia. The whole time I was at Georgia, I had a very dear friend of mine. Uh, his name was Rayford. And uh, Rayford and I spent pretty much every waking moment together um, uh, up until my senior year. My senior year, I got married, and, and my wife was working, putting me through school, and, and uh, he and I were taking classes together, and then we played every intramural sport there was. And um, it was very obvious that he did not know the Lord, um, and it was very obvious to him that I was, in his words, religious. And yet, uh, we never judged each other or never you know, thought less of each other. I got this phone call to go to this church, uh, in Spartanburg, and I was so excited because after the interviews, they offered us the job, and I told my wife uh, all about it. We were so excited, and um, I remember it was the day before my last final exam, and I, I told her that we were, you know, we're about to leave to go to to Spartanburg to be a minister of recreation, where we're going to use sports as a tool to share Christ with people that don't know Jesus. And here I've spent two years with Rayford. And, uh, and I've never shared Christ with him. I mean, she said, well, you got one more day. And uh, uh, we're just going to pray right now that the Lord will open those doors. And so we did. And the next day, um, he literally opened that door for me to be able to share Christ with Rayford. And, and uh, so it was that first opportunity. But when I, when I finished sharing with him after an hour of presenting every scripture I knew and every reason I was going and while I'm going to this church, He looked at me and he said, Kaz, he said, I know everything there is to know about you. I know everything about your wife and your parents and your family and your sister and your brother. And I know everything about your dog. He said, 
He said, if this is so important to you, he said, why did it take you two years to tell me about it? And uh, boy, it was a devastating moment for me, um, to say the very least. But it was, uh, he, he actually ended that conversation by saying, uh, he said, Kaz, I don't, I don't need your Jesus. And um, we, we drove away that day, um, uh, a com- very burdened for him. And it, it became a, a passion for me to never allow an opportunity to go by um, after that. Um, I, I have to fast forward and tell you that 10 years later, um, Rayford came to know the Lord through an upward basketball program as a coach. That was, uh, it was quite a, a joy. But that was a motivating moment for me uh, when that happened. I was um, really not planning to go into the ministry until that moment when the Lord called me and I knew nothing about it. I just thought this is everything I've ever dreamed of to use sports and recreation as a tool to uh, to share the love of Jesus Christ with those that are searching for the truth and they don't even know it. Upward sports really uh, grew out of basically a basketball league. Um, basketball was my you know, my first love as the different sports are out there. I love them all, but basketball was my first love. It was the one that I played the most. And so it was the easiest thing for me to organize when I got to the church. And uh, that first year when we um, we put the league together, uh, there just weren't a lot of kids that were signing up. And we we literally picked up the phone book, started calling people and telling them about this league and telling them to bring their kids. And and uh, when they did, um, we we had a great first year. I mean, it was, um, we had about 150 kids, kindergarten through sixth grade. We split them all up. We were very intentional about putting the kids first in everything that we did and making it all about them. And um, it, boy, the word just spread. Uh, and the next year, we added another 100 kids. We were at 250. And the year after that, it was 350, and then 450, and then 550. And, and, and we, we basically had 550 kids in about the seventh or eighth year and 20 kids, 27 kids on a waiting list. And um, I'll never forget uh, going home and telling my wife, uh, mistakenly, quite frankly, I was so, so excited. I said, babe, we got the most happening league in all of Spartanburg. I said, we got 520 kids and 27 kids on a waiting list. And she said, well, babe, if, if that's what you want to do is put 27 kids on a waiting list, then you did good. And I said, uh, well, what do you mean by that? She said, well, honey, we didn't. We didn't sign up for this to turn kids away. We signed up for this to reach kids, and it it became a it became a um, a real a burden at that point to do whatever we could to reach them, and and that's really when um, Dr. Johnny Hunt, who is a pastor at First Baptist in Woodstock, came up and spoke to us about how to grow our church, and um, one of the things he talked about is that if we have an opportunity to reach people and we're just turning them away, then we're turning them away from the opportunity to share Christ with them. And he preached on that for about 30 minutes. But then when he got done, I walked to my car just weeping over my steering wheel for those 27 kids. But that's really where it all began because we knew we had to do whatever it took to be able to reach not just them, but anybody else. And um, there was a man in our church that, quite frankly, had the wherewithal to uh, to build us another gym. And and I went to him and told him the whole story and asked him if he would if he would do that. I just asked him if he'd build us another gym so we could keep reaching more kids. And uh, he said, Kaz, you don't need another gym. You need a thousand gyms. And uh, that really became our first vision statement. Every time we, we hit a roadblock, we said, you know what? This is bigger than us. And uh, because this is bigger than us, it's got to be God. We're just going to let him handle it. And um, every time we had that situation, we would do the same thing. And, um, and that's really when Upward began. It was um, uh, September of 1995, and, and uh, man, we, we stepped out with a, with a desire and a fire and a passion to reach children and families for Christ all over this country through something as simple as a ball. Our greatest desire would be to be there to introduce them to Christ, to have the joy of seeing them come to know Christ, and then to disciple them in Christ, and then when they leave us in our age group of sports to watch them as they model Christ. What a young athlete and their families can expect if they become a part of Upward Sports is the best sports experience that you can find. And then as an added bonus, we're going to have the, idea, the opportunity to pour into them mentally and socially. But for us, our main purpose is to pour into them spiritually 
Kaz hears many stories from parents whose kids find belonging and encouragement from Upward Sports, and also from adults whose lives were impacted greatly by participating in Upward as kids. He sees God working through this ministry and offers up thanks daily in his quiet moments, using Jesus Calling to facilitate his devotional time. We're getting the joy of seeing what some of those young adults are are experiencing and and what what they're doing in the workplace and seeing their marriages and their families and how they're raising their children. And it's really interesting. And when you talk to them and share with them and ask them about those things, um, it's it's really been exciting to hear uh, them talk about some of the things that they learned when they were in second and third and fourth grade. We were sitting at this little sandwich shop in downtown Spartanburg, and we're sitting on the front porch. And when we got done eating, I went inside to pay for the meal. And when I went in there, the young lady behind the counter, she was in college uh, at the local school there. And she saw my shirt and she said, do you, uh, she said, do you coach for upward? I said, yeah, sort of. <laughs> and she said, she said, uh, well, are, are you involved with upward? I said, I am. And she said, can I tell you something? And I, she never, I never got too far to tell her what I did. She said, may I tell you a story? I said, sure. She said, uh, I'm about to get married in a couple of months when we graduate from college. But I want you to know that uh, if it wasn't for upward, I would have never met my fiance. I said, really? I said, what's the story? She said, well, he told me that he uh, he had the desire to commit suicide. And that when he was about to do that, all he could think about was what his upward coach had talked about when he was in the fifth grade. And she went on to tell the story about saving her husband's life, you know, some 10, 15 years later. And, and I was so overwhelmed by you know, I, I, how in the world could I ever track down that coach that shared with that young person a life-changing moment? That is what happens when the when the family of God, the army of God, begins to spread out and to do what they've called them to do. We hand out Jesus Calling like it's candy at the, on Halloween. I mean, my wife uh, is really the one that discovered it. Well, I'm telling you, she had to be there when it hit the stores because, it, I mean, it's been in our family forever, but she got a hold of this book, and as we read through it every day, and we would sit there and go, how in the world did they write this book just for us? I, I mean, I'm sure, I hope everybody else is enjoying reading about what we needed today because this was just for us. The reason we love it so much is because it's all biblically sound, it's biblical truths. Matter of fact, the chairman of our board at Upward, his house burned to the ground um, about five or six years ago. And the day that it burned down, um, I, I looked at the Jesus calling and the message was so powerful for that, that moment in his life. And then the day they finished rebuilding the home, and they stepped into their new house. Um, they, um, uh, the passage was just so amazing as to, to what it was. One of my favorite verses is, uh, one of my life verses is Ephesians 3.20. And uh, it says, Now all glory to God who is able through His mighty power at work within us. That's the amazing thing. His mighty power, a lot of people wonder where it's dwelling, but it's dwelling within us to accomplish not just more than, but infinitely more than. And, and if that's not enough adjectives, infinitely more than anything that we might ask. Well, you could, you could stop right there, and it still would be bigger and greater and more than anything you could ever. But then he even says that you would ever ask or even think. And so that passage allows us, it gives us the freedom as believers to think as big as you want to think because He's able to do more than that. So there is nothing that He can't accomplish. Well, on October 17th in Jesus Calling, I mean, when you talk about stretching your faith, it, it says, you know, based on, on that same passage right there, Ephesians 3.20, it, it, it says, anxiety is a result of envisioning the future without me. So the best defense against any worry is staying in communication with me. When you turn your thoughts towards me, 
you can think much more positively. Remember to listen as well as to speak, making your thoughts a dialogue with me. Now, this goes on and on, but I want to tell you one thing about that. A lot of a lot of people say, well, I want to hear about your vision. Tell me about your vision. I always get nervous even when anybody answers that question because Ephesians 2.10 says that we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God planned in advance for us to do. Not that we planned, but God planned in advance for us to do. And so the biggest, most important thing that we do as believers is to be obedient to what God tells us to do. And so the only way you can do that is to be sure that you're doing what he says and not what you think. As a result, you have to hear his voice. But as long as we're here on this earth, I'm convinced that he's constantly going to give us more that require us to depend on him to accomplish. Um, I can't tell you how many times that I've sat down and tried to make out my own plans. And I think, oh, this is good. Lord, come look at this. You're going to like this. And and over and over, he he just taps me on the shoulder and says, when you're done with your little plans, let me know and I'll give you the big thing that I want you to do. And every time that happens, it is so bigger than we. The Lord wants to do things that only he can get uh, the glory and the honor for. And so we constantly search for those, and, and we call them one of our values is the expectation of God moments. We, we look for him to do things that we just know we can't do ourselves. And, and as we continue to grow, um, he continues to give us things beyond, beyond our stretch. Sometimes we just forget about the fact that, man, that, that is impossible for us, but it is not impossible for him. To find out more about how to get involved with helping Upward expand to more families and kids, or to find a youth sports program near you, visit Upward.org for more information. Next time on the Experience Jesus Calling podcast, we visit with Marie Jose Tennyson, the Vice President of Brand and Production for Sights and Sounds Theaters. Their purpose is to present the gospel of Jesus Christ and sow the Word of God into the lives of those who attend their shows by visualizing and dramatizing scriptures through inspirational productions. Marie shares a little bit of her background and how she got involved in bringing epic Bible stories to the stage. Every morning it's kind of like, listen, Lord, like you know what I need to do today and you know the things that I need to be fully present for. And I want to partner with you and being able to do that well. So refresh me, you know, if, if I'm too tired, if I'm too distracted, you know, bring, give me what I need to be able to represent you well in this moment. Our featured passage for today comes from the October 17th entry of the Jesus Calling audiobook. Anxiety is a result of envisioning the future without me. So the best defense against worry is staying in communication with me. When you turn your thoughts toward me, you can think much more positively. Remember to listen as well as to speak, making your thoughts a dialogue with me. If you must consider upcoming events, follow these rules. One, do not linger in the future because anxieties sprout up like mushrooms when you wander there. Two, remember the promise of my continual presence. Include me in any imagery that comes to mind. This mental discipline does not come easily because you are accustomed to being God of your fantasies. However, the reality of my presence with you, now and forevermore, outshines any fantasy you could ever imagine. Hear more great stories about the impact Jesus Calling is having all over the world. Be sure to subscribe to the Jesus Calling podcast on iTunes. We value your reviews and comments so we can reach even more people with the message of Jesus Calling. And if you have your own story to share, we'd love to hear from you. Visit JesusCalling.com to share your story today.